Welcome to new Petrolhead Classics video. Today we're presenting a unique piece of Volkswagen history. Now the Beetle, of course, needs no introduction. With more than 21 million units built over a period of 65 years, it is easily the most recognizable car ever. Yet the three examples next to me, part of a fantastic Volkswagen collection, represent the very early years of production and how it all began. The cars built before 1952 are the rarest and most collectible of all Beetle. They're known to enthusiasts all over the world as split window, or in German, Rätselkäfer, due to the shape of the rear window. It's funny that nowadays this is seen as a kind of design statement, when back in the day, all Ferdinand Porsche and his engineers wanted to do was to make production of the car as simple and cheap as possible. It was simply deemed too expensive to use a curved rear window to follow the shape of the body, so they used two small flat pieces instead. This is a great example of how simple functional shape can turn into a design icon. Now after the war, much of Germany lay in ruins. The British military controlled the northern parts of the country, including the town of Wolfsburg, where the Volkswagen plant had been opened in 1938 to produce the Beetle. Now the British could easily have shut down the plant, but instead they decided to resume assembly of the Beetle. In the first years, the cars were only available for the military and authorities, and it would take until 1948 before the general public could get their hands on the cars in any meaningful numbers. It's also interesting to note that production was very, very simple and the cars were extremely basic. The paint quality was so poor that the factory couldn't produce a gloss finish, there was no shiny paint, all the cars left the factory with a matte paint. It's another irony to think that today customers pay extra to have a matte paint, whereas back in the day it was based out of pure necessity. Anyway, that changed rapidly, quality improved, and by 1947-48 Volkswagen was confident enough to realize that there's a huge demand for affordable mobility, not just in Germany, but in Europe in general, and it was decided to start exporting the Beetle. By this time, Volkswagen management had realized that they need to offer foreign clients a slightly more upmarket car. So it was decided to split production into a model called Standard for the German market and another model called Export Beetle for the other markets. So let's look at each of the two cars next to me in turn. The grey car to my right it's a standard Beetle. It was built in the summer of 1951, delivered by a dealer called Autohaus Maffei in Hamburg to its first German client. Whereas the chestnut brown car on the other side was made for my native Sweden. So it was an export car and by looking at them we will see the differences that I mentioned earlier. So we see that the standard car has no chrome whatsoever. The bumpers, the headlight bezels and the hubcaps are painted body color. There is no side adornment, no chrome strip around the windscreen, no Volkswagen sign, just everything is painted and this is very, very basic. So I'm now behind the wheel of the standard car and the interior is also fairly basic. Plenty of naked metal, rubber mats, very simple um, tent style seats with um, vinyl coverings, no chrome on the inside either. There's only one single instrument, that's a speedometer. You got to switch for the indicators, for the lights, you can adjust the heater and that's it. It's really driving in its purest form, it's meant to take you from A to B and that's it. Although all cars in this collection are fantastic, the chestnut brown beetle next to me is somehow closest to my heart. Perhaps it is because it was delivered new to my native Sweden. I checked the vehicle documents from Sweden and it's had only three previous owners before an acquaintance of the current owner acquired it. It's in fantastic original condition. It's been recommissioned 
very lightly, but it still shows some amazing details that I would like to share with you. One of the really cool things about this car is the toolkit that came with it. Pretty comprehensive, so you could basically repair your car on the side of the road if needed. We're going to take this car for a ride in just a minute, and I will explain some of the details while we're on the road, but what a difference it is to be in this car compared to the standard model. It feels like a completely different world. Seats are super comfy, you've got this very, very nice striped fabric, you've got a clock, built-in radio, the radio still works perfectly to this day, you have a very funky ashtray for the rear seat passengers, you've got interior lights, it, it, it's just, you know, like a luxury car, and many of these items were actually extras in the 1950s. We take it for granted now, but back then was a different world. And um, yeah, this is just such a lovely place to be. And it's even kept some of its original patina. All three split window Beetle had the same type of engine. It's a 1.2 liter air-cooled four cylinder. Very, very simple and robust design. Um, not much that can go wrong. And if something goes wrong, any mechanic can fix it with basically one type of spanner, um, especially if you have a toolkit like the one in this car. So I think it's time to take this beautiful chestnut brown beetle for a ride. I'll see you guys outside. So this is the uh, 1952 export model from my native Sweden. The export models really gave the customer a very, very special feeling and many of these things were luxury items in the 1950s. You also have to double the clutch up and down because the gearbox is unsynchronized but you get used to that pretty quickly. We've been saving the best for last. This is a piece of jewelry. And we've also moved up the ladder in the post-war years from austerity with the gray car to comfort with the chestnut brown export car to pure luxury. The first open top versions of the Beetle appeared in 1949. A coach builder called Heb Müller developed an elegant two plus two car that was uh, given the green light by Volkswagen management, but they only managed to build less than 700 cars before the factory was sadly devastated by a fire and the company went into receivership. So instead, production of an open top car was taken over by Karman in Osnabrück. They had developed an alternative concept, which also found approval of the Volkswagen management and after the first 25 prototypes had been properly tested, they were given the task to produce 1,000 open top beetles. That was a huge number for a manufacturer back then. This also showed how confident Volkswagen had already became. They were selling, uh, become, this already sold very well in Europe and this was obviously the foray into the American market. This particular car was built in Osnabrück in the summer of 1951 and exported to California. So this car spent most of its life in California before it was imported back into Europe about 12 years ago. Because it had spent time in a dry climate, it was relatively rust free and the owner decided to take it back to factory specification. So again, this is a nut and bolt restoration with a lot of emphasis on originality. The owner tried to find new old stock parts where possible. He also kept some of the original patinated parts, which I personally really like. The two-tone paint job is not the way the car left it factory. It was green over green. Now it's black over red, but I think it's a fantastic color combination. It has a beautiful beige leatherette interior and it's just an 
absolutely stunning car. So in the driver's seat of this Carman Cabriolet, I'm no longer in this garage. I'm driving along a coastal road in California with the wind in my hair and the sun in my face. It's just such a fantastic place to be. And you also notice how much more luxury you got in this car. Whereas the chestnut brown export car had two open glove boxes, here you have lids and they're lockable. The radio is a slightly different design compared to the Swedish car. And you also have a fantastic Kinsler clock in front of the driver. This is the same type of mechanical clock that was also used in the upmarket Mercedes cars. You had door pockets to put your stuff in. Just a lot of, you know, plushness that uh, you just didn't get in the early cars. And, and also here, as I mentioned earlier, the steering wheel is the original one. Um, there is some patina to the interior parts, but just in the perfect way, and this is a fantastic car. Thank you for joining us on this short journey through the early Volkswagen history. To have three split window people under the same roof is quite exceptional, especially when they're in such fantastic condition and have such great provenance. Now, whether you go for the standard, the export, or the Carman Cabriolet, doesn't really matter, it's down to personal preferences. They will all transport you back in time and they will also show you why this clever design turned into such an incredible success story. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's much more coming up, so um, please like, subscribe and comment. We'd love to hear from you.